In MATLAB, we can use the minus sign to perform array subtraction. What this means for audio signals is that we're going to subtract the amplitude of one signal from the amplitude of another signal. Keep in mind that the subtraction operation is similar and related to the addition operation. In fact, if you wanted to perform the subtraction operation, we can recreate this process by taking one of our signals and multiplying it by minus one and then adding the result with the other signal. Audio engineers sometimes use this process to perform something called the null test, We're going to subtract the amplitude of one signal from another and find out if the two signals are identical. If they are, the result will be a signal full of zeros. So let's go ahead and look at writing some MATLAB code to subtract signals. Here I'm going to demonstrate the process to perform signal subtraction. I'm going to use a similar approach and recreate the same types of examples that we looked at before when we were adding signals together. So to begin with, let's start in the command window with a basic example, working with arrays that just have a few values. So here, create an array x that has the values 9, 8, and 7. Create another array y with the elements 5, 1, and minus 4. Now let's write a statement of x minus y. In this case, we're going to subtract the y array from x. So our subtraction operator here is performing array subtraction, an element-wise subtraction. You can look at the result and see that this works by taking the first element in x, 9, and subtracting 5. We get a result of 4. Then we do 8 minus 1 gives us 7, and then 7 minus negative 4 gives us 11. So in many ways, this operation works in a similar fashion to what we saw before when we were adding signals together. There is one difference, though. In this case, if we were to write the statement y minus x, we'll get a different result than x minus y. When we were adding signals together, we could change the order. x plus y is the same as y plus x. So that's just something you need to be aware of when you're working with audio signals. Now let's move on and look at writing an M file that's going to perform these same kinds of things except with audio signals. So here what I've done in this script, I copied and pasted over some of the commands we were working with before when we were adding signals together. So we start and we clear things out, declare some initial parameters, declare some frequencies for our test signals, synthesize those signals, and then go through a loop. Before, we had the addition operator here to add together the elements at the appropriate sample number. In this case, what we're going to do is use a subtraction operator instead. Then we plot the result, and we can see the kind of signal that uh, is combined here. So I can zoom in and look at the waveform. This waveform will be slightly different than if we were uh, adding the two signals. So that's one way that we can add things together. Keep in mind, we can always perform a similar kind of thing without the loop if we wanted to by doing signal one minus signal two. And by default, MATLAB will automatically perform the array subtraction for us. A few more things I want to show you about subtracting signals. So let's start back here in the command window again and use the signals that we were working with before. We had x had these values, 9, 8, 7, and y had these values, 5, 1, and minus 4. Before we wrote a statement, that was x minus y. We can get the same exact result by using the addition operator if we were to invert the polarity on our signal y or on this array. So if we do minus 1 times y, we're going to get the same result as if we use a subtraction operator. You get 4, 7, and 11, which is identical here to x minus y. So these are your options as a programmer. You can decide what you would like to do. You could swap it out for the addition operator and then just invert the polarity here of the other signal. Now if I run the script, we can see that we end up with the exact same signal. So the last thing I'll mention here is something called the null test that audio engineers will use to see if two signals are identical. 
This can be done by using the subtraction operator or by using addition where we invert the polarity. This is the common way that engineers will do it if they're working in a digital audio workstation. Use the polarity invert button to flip one and then add them together and see what cancels out. So in this case, if we subtract the element here from signal two and it matches the element from signal one, our output will be zero. So if everything's identical, we end up with zero. So let's switch this. Now, instead of being F1 is 440 and F2 is different, let's change F2 also to 440. So now we should be creating the exact same signal. So if we perform this type of loop, we should end up with zeros. So now we've looked at how signal subtraction is performed and also looked at how we could apply it to perform something called the null test.